you, you were um, diagnosed with acute pancreatitis, That's weren't right. you? Which I know is extremely it's extraordinarily painful. painful. Yeah. So you were obviously prescribed these painkillers. Yes, they, they were appropriately described. Um, described. Originally, it was you were diagnosed. You were prescribed eight a day. You ended up taking mm. sixty a day. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, yeah. In what time lapse? That was over two years. So wow. for the first kind of three months of having the fentanyl lozenges, um, I stayed within my kind of maximum NHS dose. And then literally there was one day where I took an extra one and it just went from there. Can I ask you, I mean, it's funny to use the word lozenges there, which yeah. to me sounds, oh, that's nice, it's that's sweet. That's yeah, sweet. they look like lollipops. Yeah. yeah, so we'll just have another one of those. Mm. Did you crave the lozenge or did you crave the freedom from pain? Oh, it's a really complex mixture of both. Mm -hmm. Anyone who lives with acute or chronic pain knows that it's a mental battle, it's a, it's a physical battle every day of your life. And so something that comes along that takes away the pain, you just think, well, great, you know, I'll have more of that, please. But how did you go from being prescribed eight well, yes. by your doctor to getting hold of so, yeah, yeah, It was all on prescription. It was all but, but, on prescription but, but, so from my GP. So when you go back... And, you, and he says, hang on a minute, you were here mm. quite recently, yeah. you've had mm. far more than I've said. Mm. What did you used to say to them and, and how did you convince them to prescribe you so it's, many? And I'm sure Dawn will say it's very hard for GPs to know how much pain you're in because th there's no kind of way of assessing how mm. much pain I had. So I would go in and I would bully him, I would wheedle with him, I would do anything it took to get that prescription. Did you show him an inclination that I really want these, I really need these, or were you in an acting game where you're thinking, you know, if, if I have to have them, I have to have them, Doctor. Was it like double bluff or...? Well, no, the thing is, I was so physically dependent on them. I mean, I'd spent four years in and out of hospital on a morphine drip. So by the time I left hospital, I was basically an opiate addict, mm. you know, that, in effect. Dr. Don, we've got this phone in quarter to 12 um, today, and we're talking about the role of doctors and all of this. I think what Ruth and I are finding hard to um, understand is Catherine was getting what is ten times the NHS uh, maximum on this. How does that happen? Can you understand when you listen to how, how that happens? I think actually you are being so honest um, and addiction is so powerful. It will make you lie, it will make you cheat and we get told all sorts of stories. You know, I lost my prescription, the dog ate the prescription. Okay, let me ask yeah. you this. If she's aware that she's becoming addicted to this, and why wouldn't you just go to the doctor and why wouldn't doctors or, or Catherine be able to say, look, just change the prescription? Can you change the prescription and things will change? Uh, well, if you were going to change a prescription like that, you'd be changing it for another opiate. Mm. So actually you're just swapping one problem for another. You're not dealing with the underlying problem. Uh, and for you to have come off that kind of dose and mm. to be sitting here today completely painkiller free is amazing because mm. it's hard work. Yeah, and it's a, it was mm. a long road. I mean, you had to get mm. yourself into rehab. Yes. I mean, I, it was yeah. interesting when I was reading about you, you said, I had to admit that I was an addict yes. before I could yes. even think well, about it. Well, denial is a huge part of this because yeah. obviously you have to meet your own pain again so it's very frightening to go and think I've got to live my life in pain. So what do you do now if you're not to take, you haven't for quite a long time now? For five, mm. yeah since 2010. Yeah. So, so what do you use instead? Yeah, it's really difficult. Um, I can't use anything. I use a TENS machine, um, I use herbal supplements, um, I do breathing mm. and lots of times I don't really cope at all.